Making wine is one of the most special things on the planet. Can you imagine what it's like to make it with one of your best mates? It's double special. It's beyond double special. It's it's to me, it's such a beautiful thing to do. I love making wine and I love my mates. So when I get to do them both, who's a lucky bastard? South Australians, no convicts, but you would query that when it comes to Esborn and Tim Smith. You know, him and I have a lot of parallels. Like, um, mm. we're both former Barossa winemakers of the year. We're both barons of the Barossa. Uh, I happen to be on Grand Council, so I'm a little bit more important than him. We ride Triumphs, except Smith sold me out and bought a Harley. We make wine in the Barossa. We're both Gen X. We're both port supporters. There was nothing to disagree on. The only thing we had to agree on was how many equal parts of each other's wine went in. You know what killed me? It was 50-50. All I wanted it was to be 51-49, and we agreed, 50-50. Can you imagine Tim Smith and S. Bourne stuck in two wineries together, yelling at each other across the Vine Vale grounds? The banter's ridiculous. The only thing that kept it really sane were both Port Adelaide supporters. I don't think there's anyone else in the Barossa I, I could have done this with. Sorby, maybe. Caroline and Nige, maybe, but really, you know, who's the guy that I have coffee with every week? Who's the guy that I take to the pub on Friday with for lunch? Who's the guy that I love the most in the Barossa, other than myself? Tim Smith. That's one of the other things we, we came up with was uh, over uh, um, a glass of Riesling at lunchtime was, if we're gonna do a collab with the two of us, it needed to speak of the Barossa. We really wanted to make a statement not only for the Brossa, but about the Brossa. Because, yeah, you know, if, you, if, you, if you look at the buy again ratings with all of the Brossa producers, um, I know it's going to sound arrogant and conceited, but we are the premier wine region in this country. And um, yeah, I think, you know, those numbers kind of indicate that as well. First thing was, where were we going to do the blend trials? My winery, Tim's winery. In the end, we did it at both. And then we double checked ourselves at the Tanunda Hotel, best pub in the Brossa. There were numerous uh, phone calls and texts at all time of the day and night. Lots of um, what ifs, like what if we did this and what if we did that. You're always going to test your wine. Best way to test your wine, does it pass the pub schnitzel test? So we tried this out a couple of times. Smith and me sitting in the pub over a schnitty, had a couple of glasses of wine and declared it to be merchantable. I'm Gen X, so we don't talk about collabs because I'm not cool and funky, but now I am. Me, Tim Smith, the Barossa, the collab. If there's one bottle of wine left on the whole planet and it's Christmas this year, this is your jam. I think Stewie's wines are probably um a little more aromatic uh, compared to what I make. My wines tend to be a little bit more um, uh, layered and um, unctuous, whereas his is a little bit more aromatic. So I guess if you look at the combination of the two, they kind of um, complement each other. All right, imagine this. You pour some Barossa Shiraz into the glass and the first thing that hits you is the colour. It's deep, it's dark, it's rich. The second thing that hits you is the smell. It's aromatic, it's, it's brooding. It's got this mysterious bowl of dark red, blue and black fruit. And the next thing that hits you when you put it in your mouth, it's rich, unlike the blokes that made it. It's absolutely mouth filling. It's gonna last in your mouth. When you've swallowed it, you're gonna sit there and go, it's still hanging around. Bit like a Port Adelaide supporter. You're gonna see this bottle and around the shoulder of it, it it's got the Barossa. This is the Barossa proprietary bottle for our region. It was the only thing we could think to put it in. It tastes amazing, you should see this stuff. It's a medium body wine from 2023, one of the coolest, latest vintages we've had. I love that it's got this beautiful core of primary fruit. That's the essence of Barossa Shiraz. It's not uh, clunky or gluggy in any way, like it's not overripe, it's, um, it's got really um, meticulous and considerate use of oak. If you want to talk Barossa Shiraz, you are talking the quintessential Australian red, and this is you for Christmas. 
Christmas Day, uh, roast lamb. Uh, you're not a vegetarian, are you? For the carnivores in the room, you need red meat and you need succulent red flesh with some veggies. For the non-carnivores in the room, what about an old fashioned ragu? Old style, slow cooked with lots of tomato and garlic. First special occasion is gonna be Christmas. Why not? It's that one bottle you've got to have on the table at Christmas. Um, we're actually gonna chuck a couple down in the cellar to see how it goes, because you know, this is Barossa Shiraz. It's gonna age beautifully, um, potentially unlike me and Smith. Who will like this wine? I think the question is more who won't like this wine? You're gonna to struggle to find someone on the planet that won't like it. I would say that we've had more than one bottle together, but purely for quality control purposes. You need to pre-order this wine for one reason. Smith and I have done very, very small volume. There's very little of it, and it's gonna go like this. So get on board and pre-order it because don't come crying to me when it's gone, because it will. To make wine with your mates, who's a lucky bastard?